San Bonan. So good, San Bonan, my brother. I'm well, and how are you? Ah, we are blessed. We are blessed. Eh, hey, I wanna tell you a secret. Okay. I actually never even imagined that one day we'll be having this chat. Okay. I actually used to follow you guys. Why huh? used to? Why, why did you, you stop? Thank you, so I'll tell you why. I'm, yeah. I'll tell you why. I got distracted somewhere along the way. You know, COVID happened and then oh, yeah, yeah, attention yeah, yeah, yeah. all over yeah. and so on. But I, I love what you do with, with your daughter, how you bring up. I love the confidence. Mm. Um, you know, the confidence that she has. I mean, you guys are real. Thank you. And I love this family. Thank you very much. That's the though. secret. So you don't know me? Yeah. But I know you. Ah, no, do not do a blessed. Really, really appreciate so, it. So yeah. I, and I think it's, it's, really, it's really great. You've got so much positive energy. But how do you keep this energy, you know, sustained? I, I think m the greatest secret to keeping the energy sustained hmm. is to keep it real, bro. Yeah. Like, for, like, yo, yeah. keep it as real as possible. Yeah. Like, so real, like, you know, taking a dump while your partner's brushing the teeth. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the, you have to be so intertwined mm. uh, um, spiritually, physically, and emotionally mm. that you create this universe whereby you can coexist yeah. in peace. Yeah. You understand? Without one b bouncing off into the other. So it's sort of like a, a yin and yang symbiosis. So yeah. that's how we kind of... Yeah, make it work. Well, I don't know, your daughter, I don't know who she looks like between the two of you. Me, of course. <laughs> you buy that? <laughs> yeah, she does. Uh, but the youngest one looks like me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tayamo looks like the mother, Kumo looks like me. Okay. And our son looks like the mom. Oh. Yes. Oh. So it's only one child that looks like me in that whole family. Okay. Yeah, but okay. they all have like a vibrant personality and okay. yeah. So. Tolesmo, how did that name come about? Tolesmo, it stands for totally outrageous, avant-garde, street style. Goodness Mo. gracious. Yeah. How it came about. Okay, I want to mm -hmm. test that. I want your wife to say that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> she only gets the drum. Do, you, do you even attempt? Do I'll even try, try again, but I'm not sure if I'll get it right. Sure. It's totally outrageous laughter, uh, avant garde street style mo. Yeah, yeah. Mo. yeah. <laughs> that's right. <huh>? Fine. <laughs> I want you to describe your husband. In how many words? Let's say you can freestyle. You, you're, you're describing your husband to somebody who doesn't know him. How would you describe him? I won't look at your look. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's kind. He's funny. Um, he's. Um, he's energetic. Yes. He never stops talking. Hmm. Um, he's a bad listener. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. He he doesn't have style, but he tries. But uh, but at least at least he can depend on you. I mean, there are things very. Like, Please. You, yeah. Somebody has to be a pillar. Yes. Yeah, bro. Without you know, her, I don't align. You lie, can man. imagine. Ah, without her, I don't have any yeah. style whatsoever. Yeah. Man. Mm. How would you describe? His relationship with money. Very bad. Okay. That's <laughs> very bad. Well, she's being real, bro. It's real. It yeah. is true. You yeah. know, <laughs> but it doesn't mean the truth doesn't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do you come in there to, to be an equalizer, you know, to maintain a balance? Again? He hates it. I guess it's a man thing. Mm. I think money gives men power and they like being in control of it, but cannot manage it. Yeah. Um, it's a man thing to always want to have money, you know? Um, and he, those were one of his weaknesses in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Um, Wanting to have the duffel bag, baby. Yeah. You know, yeah. yo, my bro. I mean, I've been dealing with cash, it's bad. Because yeah. I grew up because, you know what I'm saying, not knowing what money is, you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, look, let me give you an example. I worked at McDonald's, right, when, uh, when I was in grade 11 in matric. And I gave my mother my bank card, thinking I'm saving with her. Okay. Sharp. Two years in, matric dance comes. I'm like, yeah. Ma, can I please have my card? I want yeah. to go out there and get myself a Caducci suit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hire out a vehicle, mm. you know, mm. get my girl a nice, beautiful bunch of roses and some jewelry, mm. you know, mm. then I can be nice for my matric dance. Mm. You know, my mother looked back to me and said, Monges, yeah. so, <laughs> we'll let two years later, young, level, you 
Yeah. Bullseye. <laughs> what were you eating? Yeah. What were you wearing? Yeah. Where were you staying? Mm. You understand? Yeah. So I knew that all that money that I worked hard for was what? Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Not knowing that it's black tax. I was okay. working to support my mother, who's yeah. a single mother. Yeah. Who was raising me, paying school fees. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I didn't understand yeah. why at yeah. that point in time. Mm. You know? But later on in my life, it became a problem, this mm. thing. Because now I've got this me attachment thing to my money. Yeah. That I don't even believe it or trust it when it's in an account. Mm. Because of this trauma, that this financial yeah. trauma, yeah. or economic abuse, <laughs> <laughs> call it that, yeah. you know? Mm. So I had this non-trusting factor that every time I would receive my paychecks, every time mm. I receive a big check, paycheck, mm. my wife knows I'm at the bank, baby. Yeah. I want to withdraw that money, mm. and I'm going to keep it on me in my safekeeping, yeah. like a Chinese man. Sure. And I didn't know that that was my weakness, because mm. the spend on that cash in the duffel bag. Just mm. keeps on going out like this. You meet up with an old friend. Hey, I'm saying, don't know. I'm telling you, five clippers, fuck off. Oh, it's next. Yeah. Five clippers. Yeah. You, you understand? Yeah. And even when I was rolling with my wife, I always wanted to feel like when I'm with my woman, I should have mm. money. Mm. You understand? Mm. I, it, for me, it was, I was also raised in a way that um, a man was the one who has to do everything. Mm pay the rent, pay the what, what, so I was mm. extremely bad with money. I'm the worst. Yeah. I know that for a fact. So how did you get to a point where you accept that hey, the money is a bit of a weakness for me? Money management is a weakness. I need to relinquish power. I need to give my wife power mm -hmm. and allow her to take control. That was when she decided to manage my career. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Because when we met, we had our own management and mm. we were just running our own stuff. Mm. We had separate finances. Mm. However, <clears throat> at, at that point in time, obviously my belief was that mm. so I was paying the rent, paying all those things, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Making sure we have a vehicle, making sure that things are fine, whatever she needs, groceries, whatever, you know, then whatever mm. she makes, mm. ah, it's extra money for her on the side. Mm. If she decides to buy me a birthday present, mm. wow, it's, mm. it's something extra, you know what I'm mm. saying? Or if she decides to spoil me when she does, because she always loves getting me sneakers, you know? Mm. So that's what she would always do for me most of the time and mm. do my birthday parties and things like that. I realized that me handing over my finances to my, to my wife mm. was the greatest saving grace I could have on myself. Yeah. Sometimes mm. you have to accept your financial weaknesses. Yeah. And the only way you can improve those financial weaknesses is actioning and doing something about mm. it. So the only way I knew how to do my financial weakness was to be open cards with my wife mm. and say, baby, this is me. Mm. This is what I've been making. This is what I mm. have now, mm. and this is what we're going to make. Mm. Can you help me manage this? Mm. Because I see how you manage your finances. My wife was able to save back then. My mm. wife had savings of like, you know, over 100K in her account mm. during the time when, if we had 100K, we would have splurged that money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But mm. she wasn't like that, mm. you know? And when I handed it over to her, it, it, it really helped me so much because Everything was paid on time. Mm. Mm. My bond was, my, my rent was paid on time, my things. And then later on in life, she then told me that, Mo, we're at a financial position now where we can apply for our first home. Wow. Mm. I was like, there's no way, baby. We can mm. apply for a bond. Yeah. Me and you, we don't have mm. a pay slip. We're not employed. Mm. It's like, Mo, I've been managing this company, our production company, for X amount of years. Mm. We're in a financial position whereby you, mm and I mm. can qualify for a home. Mm. And that was the biggest eye-opener to me that actually even made me step back even more. Mm. And I realized that I'm the, I'm, I'm, in this relationship, I'm one of the financial makers. Yes. I make the money. Yes. I don't have any problem with that. Yes. Yes. But to manage the money, mm. this is where it should sit at. You yeah. understand? Yeah. Yeah. I love how you complement each other and also your realization that when it comes to money, mm. you must know how to make money, mm -hmm. how to keep money, mm -hmm. and how to grow money. Yes. These are three different things, but it revolves around money. And how to manage it. Absolutely. Uh -huh. So let me ask your wife. Mm. Uh, so, ma'am, how did you go about uh, instilling discipline when it comes to managing money? I can imagine it, surely it, it, it's, it's, 
it must be something that must have been challenging perhaps in the beginning. I think for me, most importantly, I don't buy things I don't need. And I don't think people should be buying things they don't need. Yes. You know, um, you can, I, especially in our black culture, it's, it, it's a problem to see money that's saved just sitting in the account. But like, it's fine. Someone always mm -hmm. wants something, you know, like, break something or yeah. do something. It's, yeah. it, you know, it's in us because you need to show Hori you are working or you are earning, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in that. Um, the same way I don't believe in buying cars, you know? Like, I, I guess it's also my husband's thing because I'm a believer. We don't believe, believe in getting um, cars in, uh, on installments. Yes, yeah. it's, it's, yeah, it's it one thing for me. Once. It's like, yeah. I don't want to... Um, I don't want not to be able to explain mm. that million rand car in five years, like, you know, and then five years' time, I don't have a million rand in my bank account, but I'm driving a million rand car. Or the value of your car is yeah. higher than the value or, of your home. Oh, it's higher than the value of my home. It like, doesn't make you know, sense. Like those type of things. So mm. I always, be, I, don't, I, I don't invest in material things, but like, I'd rather buy more homes than to have. Mara baby. You know? Mara baby. Talk Wait. the truth. Yeah. No, I do He's buy. asking, listen, no, yes, you are telling the truth. I'm saying now talk the deeper truth here. Yes. He's saying, his question is, how do you then manage? Ne? When I hand it a, over the finance. A percentage you, of everything that comes into the business account goes into an investment. It doesn't I matter know. how much it is. It's I hidden know. somewhere, bro. Yeah. I know there's money somewhere, yeah. but I don't know where it is. Mm. And even if I want to get access to it, it's mm. a hope, it's a procedure, it's my a man. It's a process. You, 32 you, days you, like this, I understand. You must the motivation you, why. You must, you understand. And this yeah. is now long-term investments. And I'm thinking to myself, mm. I'm, th I'm gonna put new mags on my car. Mm. I need a new PlayStation 5. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, mm. but then, when I retired, mm. then those investments started kicking in and I realized, damn, mm. I was only making money when I was there. Mm. Mm. So when I retired, I realized that I can't make money if I'm not there physically. Yeah. Yeah. So her, her opening up those investment accounts, opening up our bond, mm. opening up the, 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 the money market account, opening up the 32-day savings account, it, it, it really taught me the true meaning of being a provider. Mm. Because my financial aim is to provide for all of these yeah. financial assets. Yes. It's, it's not to spend on it. Mm. You know, mm. when um, I think my wife and I uh, um, have reached a point whereby in our lives we can live without worrying oh, at the end of the month are we going to balance. Mm. You, you, you understand? Mm. We used to live that life whereby I'm like, if I don't have six gigs this month, it's a problem. The landlord is going to be on us. You know, we now know how to work in advance. Wow. Instead wow. of working in arrears. Yes. You, you understand what I'm saying? And yeah. even with all of our billing, we always ask for advance billing hmm. because that way you know that if anything were to happen, you're not in debt for any services that has been rendered to you hmm. because they can't render the service to you until you've paid it in hmm. advance. Hmm. So those are the kind of financial tricks hmm. that we had to kind of learn between yeah. the two of us and it, it's working. So, Mama, where did you learn how to manage money? From my mom. Wow. So tell us about the principle that she instilled in you that, you know. Ever since I was a young age, number one was not to buy what you don't need, you know. And secondly, she, she left nursing at a young age. She's always had an entrepreneurial mind, you know, and she would, till today, I mean, she's like 72, but she's got a... Tax shop, she's got a, support, she, says, tax shop. Uh, she sells Avon products. She's mm -hmm. always looking for ways to generate money. And from then, that's how I learned that I don't need a pay slip for me to reach certain goals in my life, you know? And like, I've never had a nine to five job, like going she's to the office worked. or whatever, she's you know? That's why I've worked, I've just never worked in the office, yeah. you know? This is your job. <laughs> I'm still yeah. working, she's I'm still never, working, she's never, you know? She's never had the grind, the call center grind. Yeah. No, 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 no. It she's has never always flipped been. the beggars, no, <laughs> no. no. Yeah. So it has always been my goal to be self-empowered, you know, in so many ways. And that's what I also instill in our children. Like, I don't want to raise a generation that will need financial healing at a certain stage, like my husband does, you know? You know, like mm -hmm. having to teach them um, 
That's from, deep. Financial healing. Mm. Yes, financial healing is when mm. you don't understand how to maintain your yeah. finances mm. and then you are broke at the age of 40. Mm. How are you going to get to your 50s? You know, not, you're trying to learn how to save and already you are like in your 40s. You know, that's when you start healing your financial crisis or issues, mm. you know. So I don't want to raise children like that. So with Kumo, we started teaching her how to create products that she can sell. You know, even now in her head, in her classroom, she tells them, I'm a CEO of my company, wow. which Listen she is, yeah. you know, and she's cool so she's involved. Nine. She's turning nine in December. In December. And she's so involved with her product, like she knows what she would endorse, what she would not endorse in terms she knows of brands. Where it's manufactured. And yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So Kumo is nine, but she's already generating income. Yeah, herself. I think she started yeah. at three she, when she started she was, three when we launched her online wow. store. But then she was doing and television work at But the she age was of two. at two she was already like influencing other brands. So let's talk about what Kumo is doing. I, I love this. So Kumo um, is endorsing brands. She endorses brands, but she's got her own hair brand. She's got her own hair brand. Mm -hmm. What else with is her she doing? Own, uh, with her own different products yes. from this hairline. Yes. And obviously when she does these influencer things, she gets paid to do that, to influence yeah. all the other brands. Yeah. And outside of that, obviously, at home, it's for her to learn how to build a brand. Like when she sees us in these meetings, yeah. whatsoever, she's curious to know about stuff you know because she wants to make sure that her brand grows to become yeah you know and we the thing wow. is i think the most important thing is involving her in critical yeah. decisions in her business okay because what's so cool is that kuma is nine mm. she can make a million mistakes before she reaches that That's billion it. rand goal yes you understand mm. and she started from the age of two making mm. these financial decisions mm. or making mistakes or whatever ma learning how to because we had to reopen her uh, uh, we had to reopen her company again after we've closed it because initially we started with product that was not in demand for her age group bubble and baths, like bubble baths and stuff salts. like that it was selling but it was not going to grow the brand so we had to do our research take another two years rebrand rebuild a whole new product now and she knows that she's got a value of like a million rand stock mm. that she just needs to place in the right places you know and that's what we've been working on the whole of this year it's like we will find the right places for you to place the product yeah. it's not about now and it's also about teaching her to to be able to create a business that does not need her presence mm -hmm. her brand can run without her you know and it, it it allows her to be free and do other stuff you know and helps her to understand the importance of having different source of incomes yeah instead of having wow. one job can you imagine how many parents are raising kids who start making income from the age of three and they have multiple streams of income mm. and they're just managing this money for her and then actually instilling. For me, that's remarkable. It's yeah. very rare. She's so proud of herself. She bought herself her first iPad. Mm. She's bought herself a Nintendo Switch. She, whatever gadgets she wants, mm. she knows that you know, I've worked and I've done certain things, but is it something that I can afford to buy now? Is it a part of my short-term goal, my medium, long-term goal? Mm. Is it a need or is it a want? Mm. You know? And then based on that, she, we will then make that purchase on her behalf. She wow. quite waited for the iPad because I was like, what else are you going to use it for, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, okay, when I launch my product, I can flog my stuff and this. And I was like, okay, fine. They still use them at school. So to know the difference and for her to understand, to learn to prioritize, it will help her to be able to run her business because she will know that I don't need to buy the Gucci bag if I don't have the money for it, but I can invest into my business. Like... Mm. Also, her business was self-financed by her through all these endorsements that she was doing, you know, and her Albany campaign paid her quite good money, you know, and to reinvest, to start your own product and design your own bottle, it's quite expensive, you know, and it's all so done from by scratch. herself from scratch, from scratch you know. Bro. And choosing yeah. the colors and working with uh, this agency that helped design the whole packaging for her, you know. To the formula. To the, yeah, She's take got it a to the meeting. formula. And the formula is hers, you know. She can use it, she can give it to her children. Her children's children can still use that formula because it belongs to her. Yeah. So there's no other hair brand that is using her the Moringa-infused 
products the way it's the way it's done. designed like it's it's crazy mm. it's got so many health it's a, health. it's a hair product with health benefits, benefits for you yeah. yes, yes. it's actually it goes into your scalp it diffuses so into your body it goes into your bloodstream it's it so flows, great bro. you see now she's the one who's going to teach a lot of our wow. people because i've been looking at so you know but yeah. She's now about to educate a lot of kids about it. Mm -hmm. That's a whole new generation there. Yeah. So people need to understand that mm. in order for you to be successful in business or in order for you to be successful in, in, in being an entrepreneur or to be a, a person that's going to be successful financially, mm. you need to understand what time and era you are living in. Mm. Right now we're in the third industrial revolution, which is what? Wellness, mm. entertainment, mm. lifestyle. Mm. If you take a look, those are the three biggest elements that are selling across the entire world right now. Nothing sells more than lifestyle. But can, can, can you give me lifestyle in a bag? Mm. You can't. It's an intangible thing. We're selling things now that are, that are how can I say, good for you, things that you need, but are intangible. How does a brand own happiness? It's a lifestyle. Hmm. I'm selling you happiness as a lifestyle which is backed up by my brand. Hmm. My brand is toilet paper. You wipe your butt with this thing, <laughs> but it gives you happiness. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So without understanding how the, the, the different revolutionary spaces we're in works. Mm. You cannot succeed in business. Mm. And you have to understand that you within... You constantly do the wrong business. You'll be doing the wrong thing. Mm. You, you, you can't only now mm. be thinking about doing second industrial revolution based businesses mm. in the third. It's impossible. You cannot catch up. Once you're a pioneer within any industrial revolution, you stand to be a leading pioneer and the leading example within that industry for generations to come. Mm. Give you an example, Ford Motors, mm. Chev, Johnson & Johnson. Those are all businesses that, be, that, that began because of a change of an era. Mm. Now we're moving into the fourth industrial revolution, which is what? Artificial intelligence, coding robotics, non-contact sport, virtual reality, hologram, um, uh, uh, um, augmented reality, social media. That's where we're at now. Mm. You understand? Mm. So now if you want to be doing business, Within the fourth industrial revolution, you need to think, move, behave, and sell things that are in relation with that industrial revolution and try your best to pioneer it. We, we missed out on the third industrial revolution. It, I understand, because it started in 1994, 1992. We had no idea what industrial revolutions was. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And the people that started doing business then, like for example, Herbalife, they started wellness companies back then. Look at them now. Mm. They're at the end of the third industrial revolution, but then they're the most, yo, they're the highest paid wellness company. What is wellness? Mm. I can't sell you wellness. It's an intangible product. But it's, it's, it's a genre of multiple businesses that create money under the name of wellness. Mm, yeah. We're not thinking about, mm. the, being a homeopath. Mm. You know homeopathy is part of wellness, but then mm. wellness kicked that stuff out the way. Mm. And it put itself in a position whereby it works hand in hand with entertainment, mm. with lifestyle. Mm. So the business that we are doing now is also fourth industrial revolution based. Mm. We're doing what? Esports. Mm. We're bringing esports to the black gaming community because mm. we don't want them to miss out on this wave. Mm. Because if only you're going to consider doing an esports career when everybody else is doing it, mm. then what? Yeah. Tell me, um, you know, because I think you're talking to a lot of parents out there mm. in how they are raising their kids and basically parenthood. Mm -hmm. How important is the role of a parent in raising children like you are doing with Kuma now mm. to pursue their dreams and to support them, you know, and, and, and guide them in the, in the right direction? It's very important, number one, um, parenting, it's a journey, you know, it doesn't end when they finish matric. Um, we were raised by parents rushing us to finish school, rushing us to, to do things so we can play, pay the black tax card. Mm -hmm. So I think I've been that child who's never believed in that, hence I've never had that job, you know, because like I said, I believe in self-empowerment. So. Um, only if parents knew and understood that 
when we teach them, and patiently so, from a young age, it actually offloads a lot of your shoulders mm. in the near future, you know, because, you know, when the mind is still fresh, it catches very quick, you know. Uh, j just seeing Kumo being able to explain one of her products and how it can benefit you and how, like, she believes in it even when she says it, you know. Can you imagine what she could have, she would have learned by the age of 18? I don't even see her going to varsity, no. She will be visiting universities and teaching other kids how, how, to be entrepreneurs. how to be entrepreneurs, you know, and also to prevent this thing of taking kids to university and they don't graduate. I'm one of them, you know, and I'm also one of them. They don't graduate, but like because okay. my mom had a plan and it was what it was supposed to be, you know, like you're gonna go to varsity, then I get varsity, I get bored, you know. I was telling someone accounting. yesterday, yeah, I had to go study accounting because my sister was an accountant, you know, but at the same time I was good in fashion, but they wouldn't allow me to study fashion. I just found my own street way of being involved in the fashion world, you know, without having to graduate, you know. And for me, it's because I didn't want, I never locked myself in the working world, you know, so I was like, fine, I'll go to varsity to meet people, you know, that's what I went to varsity for. I was like, I'm gonna meet great people and learn other people how they do things. I I was not about I'm coming back with my graduation. No, my sister did that, you know. And through those varsity experiences still, it, I was still finding myself and also chasing my self empowerment, you know, and dropped out of varsity and moved So we to don't want work. that for our kids you at know? all. At so all, at it's all. like it's a waste of time. But because nobody taught me better, nobody taught me how not to worry about um, going to slave uh, for education for these years, whatever, whatever. Nobody taught me. The, the 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 dangers of maybe you might not even get that job when you graduate no one tells you they tell you go to varsity you will graduate and you, you will get a job no one tells you that you might stay three years without working yeah. your mind also gets stuck at that point in time so you lose three years of your life trying to figure yourself out so if we treat parenting as a, 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 it's a life journey, it, it, and it, we should not parent with emotions like that. I guess also parenting um, is affected by that when parents parent with their emotions too much. Like you want what you want for the child, and it must be there because you believe in your head that you birth the child to be what you want. Mm. So we parent according to that. Can you not be mm. 21 and be independent? I'm tired of doing things for you. Mm. So that black tax also affects the, the parenting now. Okay. It's kind of like, it throws away the patience because now we're looking at the money now, you know, instead of teaching how to make this money, yeah. you know. And, and I, want, I want to add on to this and say that it's important for parents and children to gain financial trust in each other. Yes. When your child gets money for the birthday present from Malume, mm -hmm. and then Mama's like, hey, hey, what? You, let you, know. <laughs> you know, let me put that money yeah. away for you. Mm. This is now your first understanding of what saving is. That's right. Your mom takes your pocket money, or she takes the money you receive for your birthday and says, I'm saving it for you. Come the day that you want that money. Yeah. Any, anybody with a savings account can go and withdraw their savings, right? Yes, yes. But your mother's not F and B, mm. my man. Yeah. It, that deposit is mm. not a guaranteed deposit. Mm. So when you go there, then they tell you, what the, mm. you must know it's gone, it's gone. Mm. So building financial trust between parents and child, it's important. Mm. Let your child know, well, today you worked for this thing. You have earned 10 rand. Mm. You have mm. 10 rand. Yes. Your expenses are one, two, three. Mm. What you need is one, two, three. Mm. What I pay for and what I cover for because you're a child under my mm. house mm. is four, five, and six. Yes, yes. Research says 38% of women who live in the cities mm. consider themselves as single parents. Majority of them. Mm are struggling to get financial support from the biological fathers mm. uh, of their children. Mm -hmm. When I look at this family, you are together. Mm. What has kept this unity in this family? I think it takes us back 
to not prioritizing money. Yes. I think with our family, it's... I think we just love love, like you know, like our kids. You know, yeah, we um, suckers for love. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm it gonna doesn't have to make get sense. Rid of a even lot of when we, for yeah. my God, the kid will just like you know, she loves love. Yeah, I think our family yeah. is about that, and having money, it's just the cherry on top. You mm. know, it's not something that, um, like that our children, yeah. yeah, like it drives them. So, so you don't, you don't allow money to control you i mean you no. just love life yeah yeah and, uh, and money is just one of those things that so it, it gets frustrating things. there are mm. points in time mm. there's there's no family that can ever say that our financial situation whether good or bad mm. does not affect us yeah. emotionally mm. there's times when it does mm. because everybody has got financial aspirations and goals to mm. achieve in life mm. now you told yourself that at the age of 35 you've been living on that farm mm. you're 38 my man you're still in the townhouse mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. The, the amount of financial stress and pressure that you have, mm. it's immense. Mm. So we kind of need to reach a point whereby we need to be understanding with the financial positions that, that we are currently in. in. Yeah. Yes. Mm. That you are not ready for financially. Yes. yes. And mm. that will benefit you financially. Mm. Mm. Because when you are too scared to take a risk, you've got everything yeah. mm. saved up underneath your mattress. Mm. The, the shares going out for MTN, Mara, when I know. You mm. won't buy. You won't buy because, mm. hey, man, if I lose this 10 rand, it's over. Mm. But so, it might add another 10 rand. Exactly. So mm. we need to, I'm sorry, man, my mind is in so many different places at the same time. So I'm just trying to collectively put my mm. thought together here. Mm. So what I'm trying to basically say here is this. It's important to learn how to respect money so mm. it can respect you. Yeah. You respect it starting off with the smallest and simplest of things. Mm. Ten cent or a sheep hands. Mm. You well, pick up that ten cent, my man, mm. and you put it in your pocket or you put it in a container. Mm. Money, physical cash money, you respect it. Mm. Don't crumple it up and mm. treat money. You, you treat it right, man. You want to keep a hundred rand. Oh my God, you've got to keep up with ATM. It must look fresh, crisp. Mm. You, 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 you have this relationship with money, mm. like how Americans do. You, mm. Americans love hoarding cash, mm. but it's the, their financial system allows them to work that way. Mm. And we get fooled because they are main press, they are mainstream media. Mm. And we think we can do the same thing mm. here. Mm. Meanwhile, you're not allowed to have more than 25,000 in cash in your home. Yeah, yeah. You, you feel me? I hear you. So yeah, it's yeah. control of financial self. So what kind of mindset do you think a celebrity needs to have in order to sustain their life? It's to, number one, be real. Mm. And remember, this celebrity thing comes from entertainment, which means you are a real person first, and your job is to entertain people. That's right. Not that you are above anything or anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, anything that any human being goes through financially, you can go through it as mm -hmm. well, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, hence, I always tell my children that before being TV stars, you are real people yeah. with real issues, with you know? And morals. So you will have your morals and you will have respect for others. Mm -hmm. um, and hence, like I was saying now, like, um, money is not a, a, a priority to teach them that you have money so you must um, lose your morals. No, it's to say, your money must be with you for as long as you live so you don't work for anyone else. So understand that it's not about how much you can splurge for people to see you or whatsoever. It's not about that. You Kids know? mustn't go around with thinking that you are financially well off. Yeah, that they can get away with anything or do whatever because you have, no. Even our oldest son tells you, like, when he goes out now and then with his friends, he tells him, no, I'm not paying the bill because sometimes they'll be like, your mom and your dad. And he's like, no, that's not my money. That's yeah. my mom and my dad's money. Okay. So you pay for your bill I pay my my bill you know and he started like now cutting down going out with certain friends because they want him to pay the oh, bill he works. and he's like he works you for know, the company and I still have to work for my parents yeah. company and then get paid to come and buy you Drinks. stuff you know oh. and he's like no I'm not doing that I'd rather stay home mm. because we are teaching him to value money you know and him working for the family's company, he still gets paid like all the other employees, you know, mm -hmm. so he needs to respect his money. Mm. But we've managed to give him a head start in life mm. without him having the feel of black tax. Mm. 
getting him his first apartment. He lives next door to us. We'd stay in the same farmhouse mm. there, but he's got his own little house there. Mm. I feel so good that he's there. Mm. You understand? Because mm. in, in, if we're still staying in Santon, there's no way I could have bought him a house next door mm. to mine. Mm. The house next door to mine is worth, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, explain to me. How does that work? So you are neighbors with we, we live in a homestead. Okay. A homestead? So mm. there's the main mm. house, mm. there's the warehouse, mm. there's the, the cottage. It's like mm. a second house, the cottage. It's mm. a two bedroom apartment. Mm. And then we have our staff quarters. Mm. So we gave our son the responsibility of staying in his own space. Mm. Because at that time, he's supposed to have moved out of home, right? How old is he? He's 18. 18. He's turning 19 in December. Mm. But we know what kind of world we live in. Mm. And we know that in our entertainment industry, what kind of influence and peer pressure comes with being independent in Joburg by yourself. Mm. So what we have done is that we've given him independence for himself within our care. Mm. He goes out, he comes back. You he understand? He's, he's got his own independence within our own care. So he knows and he understands that mm. I don't pay rent here, I don't pay water and lights, mm. but I've got responsibilities. I need to work mm. so that I can continue staying in this apartment. Mm. I need to work so that when I want to go out or when I want new clothes, my mother can, Give me can, can hook me up. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. But at the same time, I'm trying to teach him independence in a way that he must be able manage to branch off mm. from us, mm. manage his own money, and be able to create his own. Mm. You understand? Mm. So that we tell him all the time, but TK, whatever you're going to make, it's yours, my boy. We don't want to. We don't to want you to be like now having to uh -uh. come back home. You have to plaster the walls. Mm. You have to build me a, a washing line. You have to buy me a washing machine. Mm. You have to put the tiles. Mm. You have to get the gutter and let's all shine and shine and say, uh, let's no. Let's yes, do. black no. text, the gate must shine. Everything. <laughs> no, let us break it takes that away, generational It takes curse. away from the child's... Uh, life plans even it's like yeah. you're stealing years of their lives to if they want to bless you. upgrade your life let them do it for you yeah. if they feel that you you know you know i saw a video the other day of a man in his late 70s mm. his his sons came to surprise him with something mm. so in the story the background story it said that this father sold his favorite sports car Chevy old school Chevy two mm. door what what situation all the Corvettes looked like back in the day that mm. thing was a mean monster machine mm. he sold it in order to pay tuition for his children to go to university mm. later on in his life when he was 70 his son came back with the keys to a Corvette and guess what it was the exact same Corvette that the father sacrificed mm. wow for them to go to university. Mm. He never expected anything back from that child. Mm. When, when, you know when I saw that video and I saw that kid giving the father those keys of the car, it, it brought tears to my eyes mm. because this is how we should thank our parents. Yes. You don't understand? Mm. Not our parents forcing us to and, dem and demanding. Yeah, and demanding us to give them because they raised us. What did you raise me for? Mm. Is it not for me to raise my own? Mm. You, wow. you, you, you feel me? Have you ever thought of writing a book or have you? Mm, my first one is coming out. <laughs> my wife does have a book. <laughs> that is, it's yeah, it's coming out. Um, uh, I, uh, basically, what I'm doing is that I'm writing books about the black community, you know, and how certain things are always a myth, not spoken about, depth hidden, of black love. you know, and it's called the depth of black love because okay. uh, we're celebrating our 10th wedding anniversary next month. Uh, so it, it will be released by then. Um, so the book is to help people heal from the things that uh, were never like your mom never sat down and discussed to tarot now, Guti. One day, that's or one day you're going to have in laws, they won't like you, but it's okay, it's not your fault, you know? So the whole purpose of the book is to help heal the mind, the soul, and those who were rejected by in laws and took their lives or they fell into depression. Um, so, the, you know, family feuds as well that end up being our issue, those black texts as well, you know, and uh, the calling as well, those type of things. So, nuclear family. Families. Yeah, and how the nuclear families are changing and, you know, and mm. it will be like multiple books based on different topics about the black, the black culture. Wow, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Finally, mm -hmm. if you were to give free advice mm -hmm. to parents out there mm -hmm. about the money issue, mm -hmm. what would that be? 
my free advice would be a collection of everything I've said on this interview. <laughs> Number one, yeah. gain financial trust with your children. Yes. Do not make your financial problem your child's problem. Yes. If you are broke, yeah. don't be angry and miserable at the child that he asked you for a stock suite. Yeah. He doesn't know. Explain to the child to make him understand what are the limits mm. of our financial capabilities. Yes. If you are financially well off, mm. you need to restrict your children and make them understand where is their level of financial freedom in mm. this setting. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. And last but not least, the most important thing, teach your children how to love themselves. Because mm. if you love yourself, it comes with respect. Self-respect comes with dignity. Mm. Dignity comes with integrity. Mm. Integrity comes with responsibility. Mm. Responsibility then shows what kind of a person you are when it comes to handling your finances. All those things, all those traits mm. trickle down to how you behave mm. with your pocket. Mm. That's what it is for me. That's my, mm. my final word of advice. Let, mm. let your kids trust you financially. Mm. That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for me, um I think I'll just say one thing. Um, let's learn to teach our children the love for self first mm -hmm. before the love for money. Mm. And let's help them and understand um, what money is actually. Mm. You know, I feel like um, having kids go out and, 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 and spending money on stuff that they can't even afford, you know, it's like teach them the value of money and what it is but above everything else teach them the love for self first mm -hmm. once you love yourself even a guy comes with a million rand you'll be able to it's a nigga chill you know and you'll be able to Yo, bro. Hey, I feel sorry Tell for whoever's gonna take my kid's yeah, shit. Like, I feel sorry for them because you know? there's no way you're gonna come to my kid and be like, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm a millionaire, yeah. whatever. It's like, yo, nigga, I've been making this since I was three. Yeah. yeah. So what are you bringing to mm. this? Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So we wanna raise kids that are not gonna go into relationships based on financials. Mm. Yeah, like they you need understand? To learn. That's the big mistake. Yeah. I'm dating a 45 year old man uh, because. because you know, he can provide, but what about your mental health? Like, you are understand? you happy there, you know, and your so financial health? So don't want your health. kids to end up being those kind of kids. Teach them what money is now. Let them be responsible for this money. Yeah. And let them know that if you get money from someone for free, mm. don't expect that it's for free. Yeah. It, money has got, what you call this and thing, also someone, mm. someone once said to mm. me, uh, a mother of two children, she once said to me, um, I can't run a company. I don't see myself doing that. I'm okay working for this company, you know? So for someone like that, they would say, so how do I then teach my kids? Because even myself, I can't, you know? And I think it's the little things that we learned when we were kids. Mm. If that's entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. it's only how far you can take it so and I always said, yeah sweet. and what are they doing and mm. you know what I'm saying mm. so it's 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 a somebody once said if you have nothing to sell then you have a serious problem you know in life you have to have something to sell yes. you know yes. so parents need to understand that it's important to teach their children that in life before you even for me it's like before I even think about getting the degree and for me to know what degree I mm. want then mm. I must know what I want to sell yeah to make a living that's it you know bro. once wow. I know what I'm selling then I know where I'm going mm. and it's don't forget you don't, does, you don't have to sell product yeah and it doesn't teach have to your be kids product. how to it provide service you yeah. can it's provide just, Service. Hmm. It does not require money. Work. Teach your kids that don't think about businesses that will require capital. Yeah. Hmm. Think about a business that suits your circumstance. Hmm. I don't have money. You can business. be an influencer. Therefore, you must think about a business that that that, that can work on a yeah. deposit and balance system. Yeah. That's why it is. Wow, Monges. Yeah, man. And Memo, thank you so much. No, thank you very thank much. Thank you, you are a wonderful yeah. couple. Yeah. Thank you, you so great much. Parents. No, thank I'm you. sure a lot of people are going to learn a lot from what you've shared with us. Thank you. And may you continue to be blessed. Thank you very thank much. You. We must thank do you. an exchange of hair. Yeah. Give me your beard, I'll give you my hairline. <laughs> <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <Then you are. laughs>